Delay. The death of an Australian aid worker in Gaza. A pedestrian killed on the Pacific Motorway on the Gold Coast, hit by a truck. Epic fundraiser, the group of hunter women who took on Kokoda for the Mark Hughes Foundation. How federal politicians could have their pay docked to stamp out bad behaviour. And yes, she can can another Newcastle dancer set to join the world's most famous cabaret. The details coming up next. Before now. Tonight, an Australian aid worker killed by an Israeli strike in Gaza. Our government demanding answers. Happening now, the latest on Network 10's battle to reopen Bruce Lerman's defamation case. Uncertainty for residents and families as landmark aged care reforms are delayed. Eight lives lost. Police express their dismay over the long weekend on our roads. And breaking news on the future of Zach Lomax after the Dragons let him go two years early. This is NBN News with Gavin Morris and Natasha Beersdorf. Good evening. An Australian aid worker killed by an Israeli airstrike in Gaza has been described by her family as a selfless and outstanding human being. The Prime Minister says Omi Frankham's death is completely unacceptable and is demanding full accountability from Israel. Yeah, this is Omi and Shepard again. We're at the Jirabala kitchen. And... This time last week, Omi Frankham was in the kitchen, not at a home here in Australia, but Gaza. This is the, the beautiful, fragrant, aromatic rice that will be served today from Jirabala kitchen. Thank you. Food for the millions of people trapped in the war zone, but that lifeline has been shattered by an Israeli airstrike on an aid truck convoy. The recovery of three passports, English, Polish and Australian, grim evidence of who was killed in the attack. 44-year-old Zomi among the seven victims. And our Prime Minister was quick to respond. This is a human tragedy that should never have occurred. That is completely unacceptable. Zomi Frankham, who lived in both Sydney and Melbourne, was working for the charity World Central Kitchen. <laughs> Two weeks ago, she was in the belly of a C-13 after a successful airdrop of supplies over Gaza. Yesterday, she sent this photo to her family as she crossed a checkpoint, asking her brother Mal, wish us well. Today, it was her family sending a message to the public. We're deeply mourning the news that our brave and beloved Zomi has been killed doing the work she loves, delivering food to the people of Gaza. She was a kind, selfless and outstanding human being that has travelled the world helping others in their time of need. And it wasn't just war zones. We've heard reports of the towns being cut off with most food, um, you know, without power, without water. In 2019, Zomi and the World Central Kitchen team mounted a mercy mission to Bermagui on the New South Wales south coast amid the black summer bushfires. She helped instigate feeding thousands of people um, and a lot of those people had lost everything they owned. A calm and compassionate hand in times of emergency. She lived for helping other people. So it was a life helping others inexcusably cut short, even though she was working in the most dangerous place on earth. Aid workers and those doing humanitarian work need to be provided with protection. The Israeli Defence Force has only comment to date it's conducting a thorough review into what it calls a tragic incident. The federal government is demanding answers now. Israel's top diplomat in Australia, the ambassador, was called this afternoon by senior officials from the Department of Foreign Affairs who had a message from the Prime Minister that Australia expects full accountability for what happened. Damien Ryan, NBN News. A 72-year-old man has died after being struck by a truck on the M1 motorway on the Gold Coast. Police closed all four southbound lanes at Pimpama, causing morning gridlock for commuters. It's believed the driver had pulled over on the side of the road before he was hit. The truck driver has been cleared of any wrongdoing. Two drivers collided in Coomera just before six this morning, crashing head-on at an intersection on Beatty Road and Whitewater Way. Two men were treated at the scene by paramedics, with one taken to hospital in a stable condition. Police issued the 18-year-old driver of the Nissan Navara with a traffic infringement notice for failing to give way. 
Less than an hour later, emergency services also responded to another two-car crash at Jacob's Well, with one vehicle ending up down an embankment. One person was transported in a stable condition to Gold Coast University Hospital, experiencing chest pain. The other driver declined treatment. Police have released new details on the suspected cocktail of drugs consumed by a group of people on the Gold Coast last Friday night. We haven't got the toxicology results back, but what I can say is that there was cannabis residence, uh, residue, uh, there was ketamine and some mushroom caps. The group was celebrating a woman's 40th birthday at the Ocean by Meriton in Surfers Paradise. One woman remains stable in intensive care. Police have wrapped up their long weekend safety blitz in the Northern Rivers. During the operation, a 26-year-old East Ballina woman led officers on a pursuit in a stolen Mazda MX-5 on the Bruxner Highway in Irvington. The woman faces a string of charges, including driving under the influence of an illicit drug. She's been granted conditional bail to appear at Casino Local Court in May. Meanwhile, on Saturday, a 28-year-old Byron man had his provisional licence suspended for six months after he was clocked doing 155 kilometres an hour in a 100 zone on Summerland Way in Leeville. A multi-million dollar retail centre in the Lennox Head Epic Estate has been given the green light by the local council. But there are concerns demand for may not be high enough to support the businesses operating there. A two and a half million dollar retail hub set to rise in Lennox Hedge. This is being done in a timely manner to give that convenience for the locals. Ballina Shire Council unanimously supporting developers Clarence Property to construct the two story building on the corner of Hutley Drive and Outrigger Road, adjacent to the Epic Marketplace. So it, it's great that the developers now have this development on this second pad within the shopping precinct at Epic. The new development is surrounded by housing blocks released by developers Clarence Property and boasts an eclectic mix of shops, cafes, office spaces and a car park. And the plans certainly have locals talking. I think it would be good. Yeah, there's a lot more people here now, so I think it would do well. It shouldn't be built. There's not enough people here in this area yet. You've got too many vacant land. Maybe in 10 years' time you need more shops then, but at the moment you don't. During the public exhibition of the DA in September, only one local resident opposed to the development, raising concerns about visual intrusion, noise and an increase in crime, waste and lighting. The modelling found that all the things were, were raised in that one submission to council, it will meet the criteria and is reasonable in the circumstances. The retail and hospitality sector is the second largest industry in the Ballina Shire, providing nearly 2,000 jobs. The new retail centre set to boost that even further. It will stimulate the economy, provide jobs and convenience for the locals. Andrew Jew, NBN News. Emergency services are praising the public for heeding safety warnings on the east on the water over Easter. And this weekend, locals will get a rare chance to see just how our first responders operate behind the scenes. They're the people we turn to in times of crisis. And soon the community will get a chance to see how police, marine rescue and SES volunteers respond behind the scenes. There'll be different displays from multiple agencies. They can come along and just have a chat. Hosted by Byron Shire Council with state and federal government funding, the event aims to educate the public on all things disaster preparedness. How they should have their boats set up, equipment they need, what they need to prepare around their own homes. With the organisations largely run by volunteers and even a display on red fire ants by the Department of Primary Industries, it's a unique opportunity for the community to connect with their local services. See how we train, how we... Uh, provide services to our community and see how we are equipped. Across the Easter long weekend in the Northern Rivers, Marine Rescue responded to a lower than usual number of call-outs. Authorities today praising boaties and those taking to the water for adhering to safety messages. Preparing their boats, making sure they've got good fuel on board, batteries are charged and the right safety equipment. The expo will get underway on Saturday at Banner Park. Alexandra Rees, NBN News. 
If you've had an amazing experience with the nurse or midwife in the Northern Rivers, you can now nominate them for the 2024 Healing Heart Consumer Appreciation Award. The award acknowledges the contributions and dedication of healthcare workers who go the extra mile. Nominations can be made via the Northern New South Wales Local Health District website until May 14. North East Waste has received nearly $90,000 to promote food waste recycling across six local councils. The state government cash will bolster education initiatives across Lismore, Tweed, Byron, Ballina, Richmond and Clarence LGAs. So we do need to be educating our community because it's a rapidly changing environment, but we do know that we need to be recycling as much as we possibly can for our environment. Meanwhile, Bellingen Shire Council has secured $15,000 for the program. Meanwhile, Tweed's green bins will now be restricted only to food scraps and garden waste. Fibre-based products like paper, cardboard and tea bags are no longer accepted. Council says too many fibre-based products claim to be compostable but aren't and can contain harmful chemicals that damage our environment. Accepted items include fruit and veggie scraps, meat, seafood, pasta and eggs. Another warm one right across the region throughout today. Temperatures climbing into the high 20s, but we hit 30 again throughout a number of locations. Fears for school holiday travel plans with airport firefighters set to walk off the job. The latest from our reporter next. Also ahead, Australia locks in a historic defence deal with Germany. And mission accomplished. 23 women complete an epic fundraiser for the Mark Hughes Foundation. With a website from GoDaddy, you can sell in more ways. Life lives by the Bay Forest. The owner said, I want our business to flourish and reach more customers. You can use GoDaddy to build a website and online store. So easy. No design or coding skills needed. This landed them their first online orders. Ordering that, ready to collect. Which led to, love it, smashed it. And with marketing tools from GoDaddy, business is still blooming. GoDaddy, with you all the way. You can have what you crave at the Crave Club. Fiber 190 calorie. How about what you crave? Picnicking in one of Dad's favorite places. Surrounded by all his favorite faces. Getting the girls around to Jones so Sarah knows she's not alone. Raising cash with this Motley crew, it really is the least we can do. Making my wife's pecan pie, one thing I'll always remember her by. All of us will be affected by cancer at some point in our lives, so this Australia's biggest morning tea, let's make it personal. Meet my boyfriend, Jake. What's up, everyone? What is all over your feet? Your flowers. I study botany. Resting dad face back there likes plants too. Grab some pruners. Let's prune. Terry White Chem Mart has real deals on all your favorite brands like Living Healthy Immune Support, Centrum Advanced Multivitamin, and Black Wars Magnum 250 Tablets. Get real deals every day at Terry White Chem Mart. Dedicated to care. multi-factor authentication. Learn simple steps to protect yourself at actnowstaysecure.gov.au Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Remember, stay focused. Steer for a tow ball. Wait a sec. Hilux is in stock. Oh. Find your O at your local Toyota dealer with Hilux stock available now. Toyota. Welcome to St. John's College Woodlawn. Our students enjoy vibrant learning spaces set across 30 hectares, offering unrivaled sporting and cultural facilities and an outstanding performing arts centre. Grow and learn in a faith community where everyone feels included and supported. Join us for our 2024 Open Night, Wednesday, April 3rd. St John's College Waterloo. Register online. 
Landmark reforms to the aged care sector will be delayed, with providers, residents and families being left in the dark. Leaked documents show the industry shake-up could be pushed back to next year, with fears for the health of tens of thousands of older Australians. They're once-in-a-generation reforms aiming to protect a new generation and a sector crucial to the community. But tonight, there's more uncertainty in aged care. It's way too long. How long do a lot of people have to wait for rights? Been waiting for a long time. Number one recommendation from the Royal Commission. Leaked internal departmental communications suggest new laws will not be implemented by July 1. Implementation date is TBC, but January or July next year is predicted. We still haven't seen quite large portions of this legislation and we haven't yet seen the rules. The new law is born from a damning Royal Commission that pointed to a July 1 start date this year. The changes designed to set new standards for residents' rights, quality of care and create a simpler system. But a recent Q&A with the department highlighted time as a problem. Oh, a very popular question around the timing of the new Aged Care Act. July 1 is not very far away. That's the date that government um, has committed to, but it's subject to parliamentary passage. That passage will likely involve Senate committees and greater scrutiny. If we rush it and we don't get the transition right and we don't ensure people are trained appropriately, we will potentially fail generations of older people. It's no wonder the sector is nervous because they just really don't know what the Minister is intending. Government sources confirm the delay targeting later this year. In a statement, the Minister said the government is now considering the extensive and valuable feedback to refine and finalise the draft legislation and older Australians are receiving an additional 2.16 million care minutes every single day. The exposure draft also discusses civil and criminal penalties for staff and directors. The industry tonight worried rush laws would result in staff leaving the sector. This is the lack of transparency. People just don't know and when they don't know they become fearful. Tackling aged care funding and quality has long been overlooked. The Albanese government deserves credit for taking on the task but tonight providers, residents and worried families will have to wait a little longer. Charles Croucher, NBN News. The federal court is now hearing an urgent application by Network 10, which has made a last-minute bid to reopen Bruce Lerman's defamation case. Ruth Wynne Williams is there for us. Ruth, good evening. What are we learning? Well, good evening. This court battle is right now back on the focus. Uh, more than 2,300 pages are part of an affidavit that has been sworn by former Seven Spotlight producer Taylor Auerbach and lawyers for Network 10. They claim this evidence proves Bruce Lerman leaked evidence from his own criminal trial to Seven's Spotlight show, despite denying that through his own lawyers during the defamation trial here in Sydney. Uh, right now, Lerman's lawyers are strongly denying any suggestion uh, that this trial, sh strongly fighting any suggestion that this trial uh, should be reopened at all. They say that uh, calling our back as early as tomorrow, as the judge is to Tonight, suggesting is too soon for them to prepare any case, uh, but we should have a decision tonight. Ruth, thank you. Latam Airlines has offered compensation to the passengers injured on a flight from Sydney to Auckland last month, but one Australian law firm is urging people not to sign anything. Carter Kapner says passengers have been offered payments of between $2,000 and around $7,500, but it's warning passengers to seek legal advice, saying they may be eligible for more significant compensation. School holiday plans could be thrown into disarray with strike action planned for many of Australia's busiest airports. Firefighters will walk off the job claiming staff shortages are putting passengers at risk. Vicky Jardim joins us now from Sydney Airport. Vicky, what's being planned? Well, this is designed for maximum impact. Firefighters at Australian airports are planning a four-hour stoppage on April the 15th. Now, this is the first day of school holidays for many here in New South Wales. Firefighters are targeting 27 Australian airports. They allege documents show staffing levels are creating a risk for travellers at airports such as Brisbane and Melbourne. There's deemed to be an extreme risk for travellers in the case of an emergency. Well, here at Sydney Airport, there's classified to be a high risk. We don't take this action lightly. 
But the safety of air travellers will always be our first and most important priority. We cannot do our job properly unless we are properly staffed and properly resourced. Air Services Australia has disputed the claims, saying all this action is in regards to firefighters seeking a 20% pay increase over three years. Vicky, thank you. Police have expressed their dismay following the Easter long weekend on New South Wales roads. Eight lives were lost across the state, with more than 60 major crashes from the central coast to the Queensland border. Long weekend over and back to a sad and sobering reality. Eight lives lost on the roads of New South Wales over the Easter long weekend. That's eight families coming to terms with the real tragedy that someone's missing. New South Wales Police revealing the wash-up from another Easter road blitz, and it's not good. Nearly 6,000 speeding fines statewide, roughly 500 busted on their phones, about the same for not wearing seatbelts, and that's just the start. Reckless, irresponsible and dangerous behaviours. Police have released a worst offenders list from this weekend. Among them, a 38-year-old man from Borkham Hills, accused of being drunk and high on cocaine while travelling at 203 kilometres an hour in a 100 zone on the M2 at North Rocks early Sunday morning. And late on Good Friday, a 17-year-old pea plater accused of speeding at 120 kilometres per hour in a 70 zone through Mascot. With three passengers inside, he crashed and all were injured. Amongst these numbers, there is one trend that's worrying some of our state's most senior police. That is the amount of drivers on our roads under the influence of drugs. There were more than 17,000 roadside drug tests this long weekend. 863 returned positive. That's one drugged driver in every 20 tested. Compare that to one drunk driver every 850 tested. 295 charged with drink driving after 230,000 breath tests. It is simply unacceptable. In Huntingwood, Alex Heinke, NBN News. Australian manufacturing is shaping up to be a key piece of the May budget. The Prime Minister today paid a visit to workers building armoured vehicles for Germany's military. On the factory floor, inspecting parts for these vehicles of war soon to be sent across the world. We just got you some more work. Quite heard. Australia's biggest ever defence export deal now in motion. This is a concrete example of Australia working with our partners. German military giant Rheinmetall is building a hundred boxer heavy weapon carrier vehicles at its Australian base in Ipswich, west of Brisbane. The one billion dollar deal creating more than 600 local jobs. This is all about secure, well-paid manufacturing jobs. And for Germany, it's all about security. Germany urgently needs to re-equip its military because of Russia's threats to Europe. The danger of conflict spilling out of Ukraine, sparking the agreement, first inked when the Prime Minister visited Berlin last July. The armoured vehicles, already in use by the Australian Army, have a reputation for their lethal precision. Getting um, first rounds of pinpoint accuracy compared to the, uh, our previous platform is really impressive. The Queenslanders assembling them guaranteed a job until at least the end of the decade. The first boxer to be exported to Germany will be in 2026 and the contract will be complete by 2030. Industry incentives to fire up Australian manufacturing in sectors like defence, resources and renewables will be a focus of the next federal budget, now just six weeks away. Eliza Edwards, NBN News. Leaked documents show federal politicians who play up could have their pay docked by up to 5% or be suspended if a law is passed to create a body to investigate allegations of misconduct. The Independent Parliamentary Standards Commission is supposed to be established by October, nearly three years after the Jenkins report into parliamentary behaviour called for its creation. A dedicated group has completed an eight-day trek on the Kokoda Trail, smashing more than just personal goals. The 23 women also raised a whopping $415,000 for the Mark Hughes Foundation. The money will be used to fund brain cancer awareness and research initiatives across the Hunter and Australia. 
Well, after a stunning Easter weekend, the first of our number of changes is moving through this afternoon into tonight. The first front is sweeping across the region, delivering a large rain ban. That front is moving quite quickly and it's weakening as it moves into northeast and New South Wales overnight. So tomorrow, fine for the greater Hunter, mid-north coast and northwest. For the northern rivers in southeast Queensland, there is going to be some patchy showers developing as that trough stalls. Apart from the Moree Plains, top temperatures will largely remain just below 30 degrees. A significant rain event is on the way from Thursday. Details later. Next, straight out of a Cold War thriller, new claims that Russia is behind so-called sonic attacks on American agents. A fresh warning about what's passive vaping, what it could be doing to your health. And meet the Hunter Dancer bound for the world's best-known cabaret show. Back home, the Wilsons always use proper dinner etiquette. Out here, the stick will do just fine. When my hearing changed, Audica understood. I don't just want to keep hearing my friends. I want to keep being me. Book a hearing check with one of our experts and see how our personalized care can help you keep being you. Love your ears at Audica. Anytime's a good time to learn with Tape New South Wales Short Courses. Whether you're short on time, think it's time for a change, or time for a skills boost, you can change your life in just days or weeks. Search Tape New South Wales Short Courses. Hey! Each week, IGA checks and matches the regular prices of the big two on hundreds of essentials. Here's proof. Like Devondale Dairy Soft Butter Blend Tub, price matched, and Indomie Me Growing Instant Noodles 5-Pack, price matched. You checked, we matched, you won't pay more. We created HCF Life Insurance to look after our members and their families, like the Afouris, with extra support like grief counselling and up to $1.5 million in payment. The only thing you won't get is a fancy welcome gift, because we spent all our money making our life insurance great. So, because you signed up to Life Protect, you can pick anything off this table. Would you like this? No, thanks. A uh, cheese knife? Batteries, smoke detectors, cooking oils, light bulbs, and more can be recycled at your local CRC for free. Find yours today. Smoking is the old story. <coughs> Vaping is the new chapter. Choose a different ending. <coughs> Contact your local GP today to quit smoking and vaping. Don't miss the Sparms Charity Golf Day, April 10 at Sanctuary Cove. Join Gary... Gary Webb, Alyssa Healy and other sporting legends. Get a team together and support the Australian Melanoma Research Foundation. Sparms Charity Golf Day, April 10 at Sanctuary Cove. At the Australian Caravan Centre, you'll find your dream caravan, offering brand new, pre-owned, off-road, touring and luxury caravans. Our friendly staff will find the caravan that suits your needs and budget. Australian Caravan Centre, Chindera. Adam thought he'd never get Sarah camping. How wrong you were, Adam. You're watching NBN News. These are our top local stories. There's been a road tragedy on the Gold Coast with a 72-year-old dead after being hit by a truck on the M1 motorway. There are plans to expand an Upper Hunter wind farm. Arc Energy is proposing to add another 21 turbines to the project, which has stirred up community debate. It's emerged almost 50 people were arrested for driving offences across the Oxley and New England district over the Easter long weekend. Mid-coast residents have voiced concern over an approved subdivision at Bluey's Beach. The local council has confirmed it's investigating land clearing at the site. And the Clarence Valley community has thrown its support behind young Lennox Monaghan. The 12-year-old actor has just appeared in his first feature film, Windcatcher.
A teacher at All Saints College, Maitland, has been accused of having sex with a student while they were under his care. The 39-year-old was arrested last Thursday and has been charged with nine counts of sexual intercourse with a person aged between 17 and 18. The Catholic Diocese of Maitland and Newcastle says the man is on administrative leave and that the school will continue to support the police inquiry. He'll face court later this month. Well, it sounds like a plot from James Bond, but tonight there are real allegations that Russia could be using a sonic weapon to target FBI and CIA agents. It follows years of operatives suffering what's known as Havana Syndrome, but the report has been dismissed by the Kremlin. At the home of America's Commander-in-Chief, an Easter tradition and a message. It's time to pray for one another. At a time when it's claimed those working to protect America are under attack by Russia. Bam, inside my right ear, it was like a dentist drilling on steroids. CBS is 60 Minutes reporting a secret Russian intelligence unit could be using sonic weaponry, a beam of sound, to target CIA and FBI agents, leaving them suffering headaches, nausea and brain fog. This wasn't happening to our worst or our middle range officers this was happening to our top five ten percent performing officers there was some angle where they had worked against russia focused on russia and done extremely well the mysterious illness known as havana syndrome was first detected at the u.s embassy in cuba in 2016 now it's reported this car chase in florida may have exposed a russian link <laughs> The driver, believed to be a spy, studied radioelectronics to use in Russia's military. Today, the Pentagon confirmed a defence official at last year's NATO summit in Lithuania suffered Havana syndrome symptoms. Previously, two CIA agents on a visit to Australia also claimed they had been attacked. I don't think uh, the government, frankly, when I was there, took it seriously enough. I don't think they've taken it seriously enough since then. Publicly, the U.S. intelligence community has said it is unlikely a foreign adversary is to blame. And the White House is, is tight-lipped on the possibility of a hot weapon in a modern-day Cold War. Look, we take this very seriously. In the United States, Jonathan Kersley, NBN News. An SUV has rammed into the gate of an FBI office in Atlanta. Police say the driver tried to follow an employee's car into the complex but was stopped by the barrier. He then tried to make a run for it but was arrested by officers. Israel is being blamed for an airstrike in the Syrian capital, Damascus, that killed two senior Iranian military officials. The attack destroyed part of Iran's consulate and also left several other people dead. Tehran has called it a breach of all international conventions and warned its response will be harsh. Donald Trump has posted a $270 million bond in his New York civil fraud case. The move means state authorities can't seize his assets or freeze bank accounts while the matter is subject to an appeal. Last week, a court reduced the amount he needed to pay. It was $700 million. Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling has challenged police to arrest her if they believe a series of social media posts break Scotland's new hate crime law. Rowling's posts mocking the new law refer to various trans women who have been convicted of sexual crimes as biological men. The legislation outlaws threatening or abusive behaviour intended to stir up hatred, including with regards to transgender identity. It's been described as one of the biggest public health challenges we face, e-cigarettes or vaping. Health authorities have now widened their warnings, not just for those who use the devices, but also those who expose to passive vaping. It's the battle once fought against tobacco, the harms of smoking and passive smoking. Now the same war is being waged against e-cigarettes. What we've got to remember with vaping at the moment, some of these products contain 200-odd chemicals. 
um, many of which are very, very harmful. So harmful they've been linked to cancer, heart disease and lung damage. Concerns about e-cigarettes started not long after they first appeared, but today a new warning. New South Wales Health raising the alarm about the potential harm from passive vaping, inhaling the vapour from someone else's e-cigarette. Public health experts warn that vapour, much like tobacco smoke, is far from just a harmless cloud of steam. We don't know what the long-term risks are going to be, just as we didn't know what the long-term risks were going to be with passive smoking. Vaping is banned wherever cigarette smoking is banned and health inspectors can issue on-the-spot fines of $300. It's not fleeting exposures we should be worried about. It's people who are doing it in residences, in their homes and exposing their families in occupational settings. The government admits it needs to be concerned about more than just passive vaping, given the increasing number of younger people who are now taking up the habit. It's already launched a campaign with younger people warning others about the dangers. I just woke up like gasping for air and just rushed me to hospital. My lungs just felt like they were on fire. I really did think I was going to die. What we cannot afford to see is a next generation of people hooked on nicotine, hooked on other products that are contained in vapes, and then we have a situation the same way uh, that we occurred last century in terms of tobacco and cigarettes. Eddie Meyer, NBN News. A draft of the first national autism strategy has been released, canvassing ways to secure better opportunities for hundreds of thousands of Australians. The plan, now open for consultation, aims to improve outcomes in health, social and economic inclusion and diagnosis. Research shows families face an average delay of 27 months between first noticing signs of autism in their child and receiving support. Bowel cancer is expected to claim more lives in the coming years and COVID lockdowns are being blamed. New modelling by Australian researchers shows there's likely to be an extra 234 cases and more than 1,000 deaths nationwide over the next six years. They say a lack of screening during the pandemic will result in a 2.4% increase in bowel cancer mortality rates. But increasing testing by 5% to address the backlog could prevent up to 350 deaths. To finance and attention turning to the latest Reserve Bank minutes today, which show an important shift in thinking. Chris Kohler has the details. The official minutes show something has changed at the Reserve Bank. For the first time since April 2022, an interest rate hike was not actively considered at the most recent meeting. Investors already had a pretty strong feeling rate increases were finished, but now they're all the more confident. The ASX hit a new record high this morning before cooling off in the afternoon, down nine points for the day. Most people would call that a flat finish. BHP was strong while Telstra dropped 1%. And the Australian dollar drifted down below 65 US cents over the long weekend, but was higher today. One Aussie is also buying 60.5 Euro cents and 51.7 British pence. The Moulin Rouge in Paris is home to the most famous cabaret show in the world. Soon, it's going to be the new home of a Newcastle dancer who'll step onto the stage for the first time later this week alongside a friend from the same Hunter Dance School. Known for its high-energy can-can and dazzling costumes, the Moulin Rouge's red mill and its bright lights are world famous. And soon, 20-year-old Newcastle Dance Academy student Grace Whittaker will be part of the show. I finished high school and I didn't really know where I was and because I loved dance, I had this opportunity and I took it. Grace got the call up in February ahead of hundreds of other girls who auditioned last June. I was sitting with my mum and I just started crying and she didn't know what to do. And, yeah, I had an acceptance email and it was amazing. I messaged Becky straight away. She was the first person that I told. And then, of course, I rang all my dance teachers. Rebecca Higgins learned to dance at the same studio. She's now in her fifth year at the Moulin Rouge. Grace and I are going back on the same flight. So when we land, we'll be going in the same taxi straight to Moulin. I'll take her up into her apartment. Then I'll take her around to all the shops, show her the ropes a little bit. I'm more comfortable with the experience, knowing that I've got someone that has done it all before. Grace started dancing when she was three, but credits her teachers at the academy for inspiring her to believe she could make it a career. It's an opportunity of a lifetime. She deserves it. She's worked hard. And now we have two girls at the Moulin. <laughs> so it's fabulous. 
Australians are no stranger to the stage at the Paris Icon, recognised for their world-class technique and training. Grace believes our passion also takes us to the top. Of course your training is so important, but if you do, you've got to love it to be able to do it, and that's what kept me going. Tony Abrogetti, NBN News. Oh, a good year to be in Paris. Too. Yeah, yeah, they'll have a great time. Absolutely. All right, let's move to sport now with Sophie. The Dragons have agreed to release Zach Lomax, Soph. He's had the next two years off his contract terminated, but he may be forced to stick around for the rest of the season. Coming up, breaking news on Lomax's next move, and the Eels are involved. Also ahead, the Knights get another new halves pairing, and the Matildas assemble for their clash with Mexico. <laughs> Sweet shoes. Want them? Try the Google app for iPhone. Tap this, snap that. What a vibe. Can't name that song? Tap this, hum that. Right, wait. Tap this, hover over that. And now you know. Find it, hum it, translate it. More ways to search. Download the Google app for iPhone. With a website from GoDaddy, you can sell in more ways. Light blooms by the Bay Florist. The owner said, I want our business to flourish and reach more customers. You can use GoDaddy to build a website and online store. So easy. No design or coding skills needed. This landed them their first online orders. Ordering that, ready to collect. Which led to, love it, smashed it. And with marketing tools from GoDaddy, business is still blooming. GoDaddy, with you all the way. When it was time for mum to go into care, she went into Nyola Baptist Care. Mum was a... loved and cared for and then to love and to care so deeply. I think that's the essence of being human. Old people feel so discarded and yet she was treated with value. health information to millions of households. That's the goods. Raising funds and providing free mail redirection in times of disaster. That's the goods. Make Making our deliveries and operations more sustainable. That's the goods. Australia Post is delivering the goods for communities in every corner of the country. It's another way we're delivering for Australia. At Australia Post. A Kind of Harsh, The Magic of Karen Carpenter, playing Albury, Sydney, Wollongong, Canberra and Newcastle this April. Tickets on sale now at melanevents.com. Smoking is the old story. <coughs> Vaping is the new chapter. Choose a different ending. <coughs> Contact your local GP today to quit smoking and vaping. Smoke detectors, cooking oils, light bulbs, and more can be recycled at your local CRC for free. Find yours today. High Pro Premium, the best dog food I've come across. You can tell by the gleam in their eyes and the colour of the coat, and especially the stamina they have for work on the farm. And they'll love it. High Pro, that's the goal. Luke Brooks has been one of the NRL season's most impressive performers and there's a pretty simple reason behind it. He's loving his footy. After making the move to Manly, Brooks has been studying his new skipper and believes it's making a difference. Back-to-back -back losses for the Seagulls, but life doesn't get much better for Luke Brooks. How much are you enjoying your footy at the moment? Uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot. It's... Um... It's been good so far. The more games I play uh, with these boys is definitely helps build my confidence and, um, yeah, I'm just enjoying my footy at the moment. The key to that is Captain Daly Cherry Evans. It gives me confidence going out there. 
Brooks believes his skipper's influence off the field has seen him start the season in form. Chez is, what is he, 35? Yeah, he's always wanted to learn, and that's one thing I learned from him, that although he's done it all in the game, he's still, every day, he's trying to learn something. On Saturday, the Sea Eagles faced the Panthers, who controlled the Roosters, even without Nathan Cleary. I don't know why we're always surprised about it. <laughs> We've seen it for four years straight. Brad Schneider, the latest half to star in Cleary's absence. He probably even had a little bit of pressure from the previous guys we've had. Sully and Cogs have done a good job, so for him to go out and play well, that, that, that's really pleasing. But, you know, he's got to do it again this week. Alongside James Fisher-Harris, who will return from a shoulder injury. He's our forward leader and has been for some time. Yeah, he's probably just more than the way he plays. He just... He brings a level of leadership and confidence you know, to the rest of the team. Sam Jordan, NBN News. Jackson Hastings will return to the Knights' starting lineup this Friday after being dropped to the New South Wales Cup side after round two. He replaces Tyson Gamble in the halves and will play halfback with Jack Cogger moving to 5'8". Jaden Braley will start at hooker while Dane Gagai returns from a medical condition and Leo Thompson is back from suspension. The Dragons have agreed to release Zach Lomax at the end of the season and he's free to negotiate with rival clubs immediately. NRL reporter Michael Chamis joins us live. Michael, he's wasting no time in his bid to find a new home. Yeah, that's right, Sophie. Zach Lomax has organised to meet with the Parramatta Reels tomorrow as he looks to secure a new deal. It was a dramatic day at the Dragons. They agreed to terminate the final two years of his deal worth around $800,000 per season. Now, the Eels, they're willing to offer him a long-term deal to him until at least the end of 2027. But what they really want is Zach Lomax to join the club immediately. The Dragons, they won't release him right now. They want a player in return. And there's a standoff at the moment, but you can be guaranteed one thing, Zach Lomax, he won't be a Dragon in 2025. Thank you. Newcastle's Emily Van Egmond has joined her Matilda's teammates in Florida ahead of their friendly against Mexico. The midfielder says the squad is going into the Paris Olympics the same way it approached the World Cup, only focusing on its first opponent, Germany. I think just getting on the same page and, like I said, utilising the, the time that we have as, as we don't have that much time, um, I think that's really important. The Friendly Against Mexico kicks off at 10am our time next Wednesday. Coming up next, Aussie star Cameron Smith opens up about golf's drawn-out merger. A TAFE New South Wales degree will give you a head start in your career. Choose from a variety of courses and graduate with the hands-on practical skills employers want. So make a life-changing move with a TAFE New South Wales degree. Terry White Kmart has real deals on all your favourite brands, like Dermavine Baby Cow Mixer, Swiss Altivite Men or Women, and Terry White Kmart Cold and Flu. Get real deals every day at Terry White Kmart, dedicated to care. 11 essential vitamins and minerals, low GI, protein... It's amazing what they squeeze into an up and go. We squeeze more good stuff in so you can get more out. Also available in up and go protein. Picnicking in one of dad's favorite places. Surrounded by all his favorite faces. Getting the girls around to Jones so Sarah knows she's not alone. Raising cash with this Motley crew. It really is the least we can do. Making my wife's pecan pie. One thing I'll always remember her by. All of us will be affected by cancer at some point in our lives. So this Australia's biggest morning tea, let's make it personal. <coughs> Off cold breath, try fix vapor drops extra strong. Up to three times more menthol. How's the nose and throat? Fix vapor drops extra strong. Smoking causes 16 different types of cancer and you have one clear way to reduce your risk. There are two ways to make a matrix. 
Litchi Pui. One piece, single sided, with attached pillow top made out of foam. Yes, Mr. Harvey, they should be 50% off. The best way. Two piece, double sided, removable pillow top with thousands of micro coils and a five year comfort promise. Sorry, Mr. Harvey, we make them, you don't. The Bellissimo mattress, made like no other mattress. Making mattresses, nobody makes a better mattress. Nobody. Our livestock management equipment is designed to deliver day after day, withstanding harsh conditions, from crushes to feeders and complete yard systems. We have plenty of options for your farm and plenty of advice too. Borden Brothers, equipment as resilient as you. Invest in things that matter to you today to start building your tomorrow. With the Westlawn Income Fund and as little as $10,000, you could earn up to 7% per annum on a 24-month investment. What are you investing in? Cameron Smith concedes sacrifices need to be made in order for the PGA and Live Tours to unify, but he may not be willing to make them himself as the two parties continue drawn out negotiations. Being able to spend more time in Australia, I, I don't know if I'm willing to, to sacrifice, um, you know, being away from my family and stuff. If it means playing more, I think it's going to be a tough sell. Smith will face off against his former tour mates for the first time this year at next week's Masters. The McLean man to raise a busy making preparations for the Australian Age Swimming Championships. The six-strong team says is rising to the challenge of versing some of the country's most elite junior competitors. Diving in one by one. The McLean Manta Rays are fine-tuning their skills ahead of the big dance. Yeah, pretty excited. Train all year round for this event. The whole of the community is very excited for them. Regarded as the premier event on the junior calendar, the team of six will suit up against the best of age group talent across the week. It's people from all over Australia coming, and it's up to the age of 17. Set to make her debut is 13-year-old Freya Mead, strapping on the goggles across a demanding program of seven events. I'm swimming in 50 breaststroke, 100 breaststroke, 200 breaststroke, 50 freestyle, 100 freestyle, 50 fly and 100 fly. Completing nine sessions a week alongside teammate Jet Burke, the 15-year-old will go under lights for six individual swims and two relays to mark his second year at the competition. Last year, I came 16th in the 200 butterfly, which was my best result. I'd like to make a final this, this year at Nationals. Under the guidance of head coach and former Olympian Ruth Everest, specific focuses of aerobic and sprint work are part of her squad's preparations. Some negative split type training, some um, equal splitting in for 200 metres. But Everest remains confident in her team's ability to perform. We'll put our name on the map. We'll put our name on the map. All the action gets underway at Gold Coast Aquatic Centre on April 8. Alexandra Rees, NBN News. More than 100 of the world's best professional and amateur golfers are back in Bonville this week to take part in the Australian Women's Classic. Players were on course getting a feel for the conditions today ahead of the competition. They'll compete in a pro-am tomorrow before they officially tee off this coming Friday. The Port Macquarie Pirates are making headway with their All Abilities program, advocating for more inclusive sport on the Mid-North Coast. The program has also led to a successful women's deaf team who've been kicking goals in an interstate tournament. It's a program growing year on year. Port Macquarie Pirates coach Lisa Vogel sharing her passion for inclusive sport, ensuring nobody misses out. I'm actually dyslexic and I have learning disabilities myself, um, so that's why I'm so passionate about um, the All Abilities area. Running two training sessions a week for all ages at Stewart Park, Vogel's helping others discover a love for rugby union. They've got access to learning about passing, um, tackling, they get to tackle tackle bags, um, kicking, all of the aspects of rugby. The All Abilities program even leading to a successful deaf women's team who took out fourth place in a rugby sevens tournament in Brisbane last November. All the players in the team are deaf or hard of hearing, but it's also helping them integrate into the women's team as well. Lisa says the success of the program could help more local sporting organisations follow suit. 
It's definitely an area that we need to expand and we don't want to have anyone missing out on sport just because they maybe don't quite fit into what we refer to as mainstream. Everyone should be able to have access to it. Marina Trykovic, NBN News. Absolutely right. Sport is for everyone. Yeah, it is. Great to see you, isn't it? Thanks, Soph. All right. Thank you, Soph. Well, it's been a warm one, no doubt about that. We've had a really interesting autumn so far. A little bit of everything. Some cloud and rain there a couple of weeks ago. But another change is approaching. Details straight after the break. This is how I made my very first mocktail. Yes! With the help of the Google app. After realising I had no idea what I was doing. What's a jigger? All I had to do was take a photo of anything I wasn't sure of and pop it in the app. That's the jigger. I even figured out how to work this bubble gun by snapping a photo and then adding how to use to the search. Nobody breathe. I feel like I'm about to pick up a pipe head. More ways to search. Download the Google app for iPhone. There's no shame in getting old. If you've been independent your whole life, it's so hard to ask for help. Take the first step and it'll be a lot easier. To be loved and cared for and then to love and to care so deeply, I think that's the essence of being human. The most important thing in life is love and caring for each other in a place like this. Netflix. Then you can't live without the AGL Netflix electricity plan. With Netflix included for the life of your plan. AGL do that? They do do that. Where have you been for my life? Join AGL's Netflix electricity plan today. Protect your number one mate with Australia's number one, NextGuard Spectra. It's the most complete protection against fleas, ticks, mites, worms, and even heartworm. All in one tasty chew. NextGuard Spectra. Introducing Gillette Labs with Exfoliating Bar. With one stroke exfoliation, it clears a path on your skin before the blades for an effortless shave. Level up with Gillette Labs. Refresh your bedroom at Harvey Norman with great deals on now. Enjoy a bonus cushion or European pillowcase with selected quilt cover set or coverlet sets like the Alden, just 119 for the queen size, plus bonus cushion featuring five zones of micro pocket coil support. The Australian made Sleepmaker Raphael Queen mattress in four fields for 1999. Make a grand statement with the Australian made Bellevue extended four draw queen bed and choose your stain and fabric to suit your style. More to inspire at Harvey Norman now. Go! Macaulay Catholic College, creating lifelong learners who are confident and connected to the world around them. Macaulay Catholic College, developing the whole person. Finding your dream home can be a challenge, but organising your finance needn't be. With competitive rates and fast local approvals, Summerland Bank can make it easy. Drop into your local branch or visit summerland.com.au to find out more. Well, we've had an extraordinary start to autumn. Like summer, it was largely very warm, above average, and overall very little rain. But a significant shift in our overall weather pattern is on the way. Let's go to New Haven. Beautiful angle here, looking down the river back at North Brother. Lovely from BJ. Did I say sunrise? That's a sunset looking out towards the west. But, wow, what a great angle uh, of the local area. It's a great part of the coast as well. Now, the past 24 hours, it has been wild right throughout the southeast. Big storms there from this front that has been moving across New South Wales. It's quite a significant rain band, but it's really running out of juice. There's not much left in it by the time it reaches us. It'll be pushing through overnight. Now, the catch for us is this little trough line is going to stall. That's going to be left behind. It's going to linger, and it's actually going to reignite the situation. We've got wet weather to come. Quiet across the tropical north, but this system is going to open it up, and we're going to see increased cloud and showers build from tomorrow afternoon. 
and then it's going to increase as we move into Thursday, Friday, and we're going to see some significant falls with that. Big high, though, sliding into the bite, so very cool right throughout the southeast. The chills of autumn are here. Still fairly mild for the capital. Sydney, not bad. Uh, Brisbane, 31. Uh, Alice, only tops of 26. And for Perth, again, jumping up and over 30 degrees and storms likely for Darwin as well. Locally today, cracking the 30 degree mark. Lismore, Casino, Evans Head, Grafton. Uh, temperatures into the high 20s uh, across the coast, up around the Tweed and Gold Coast area. Very warm to start with. And there's the change coming through around lunchtime uh, tomorrow. Uh, moving in with it is going to be that trough line. So we'll see some increased cloud cover and the chance of some showers forming. Not much in it. Still fairly fine. Very mild tonight and again tomorrow morning. So temperatures are still going to climb into the high 20s. Cloud increasing. There may be an isolated storm or around the mountain areas and the border ranges. There'll be a little bit of shower activity developing with that change moving through. But as I said, overall, that rain band moving in is really running out of its energy. It's uh, falling apart. A little bit of swell, not much going on at the moment. Offshore winds in the morning before the change comes through. Uh, tomorrow's sun to rise just before 7 a.m. down at 6.42. So it's an early high tide. We're back to the low just after 11 a.m. tomorrow morning and then hitting the high at about 10 to 5. The lower meter now, the swell, it's going to be small east northeasterly direction and that wave period all the way back now to 5 seconds. The wet weather ramping up though into Thursday, Friday. We're going to see some significant falls and then beginning to ease as we move into the up and coming weekend. Sunday, daylight saving will come to an end. By then though, we're going to have quite a lot of uh, rain on the ground. The potential for localised flash flooding here with this system ramping up as we move through this week and it's going to be cool underneath that cover of cloud from Thursday onwards as well. So significantly colder nights also settling in after this system moves through. Let's check out this amazing beach fusion here. What a season it has been. The water temperature amazing. The offshore westerlies. You might be able to get a little piece of this action tomorrow if you're up early and you're right in the right place at the right time. But Andy what's getting some fabulous uh, drone footage there of our fabulous coastline in action at Wallaby Point. Great stuff. Yes, the threat of flash flooding is going to be quite widespread on Friday. Okay, we'll keep an eye on it. Thank you, Gav. To breaking news, before we go tonight, a judge has announced that Bruce Lerman's defamation trial will be reopened. It comes following new evidence by Network 10. We will have more in the late news tonight at 11. That's our bulletin for this Tuesday. Our current affair is next and we'll have updates throughout the evening. So thanks for your company from all of the NBN team. Good night. Good night. Hello, I'm Ali Langdon. Welcome to A Current Affair. Coming up, drugs, prostitutes and a very expensive steak. Explosive allegations as Bruce Lehrman's defamation case reopens. Plus, the squatter who's made a hair salon home and she's refusing to move. She's basically built her own little private studio underneath my salon. But first, far too often we see the heartbreaking impact of floods. So imagine one town's rage and disbelief when developers got the OK to fill in a floodplain to build hundreds of new houses. The water has to go somewhere and locals fear it'll be their homes that go under. They're drowning our town. We're going under. We're talking hundreds of thousands of tonnes of fill. It's disgusting. Because the water, where does it go then? It's got to go to the lowest lying areas, which is us, unfortunately. The actual